Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and today we're going to be installing LED lights for my bookshelf. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumper Man Tech. These are actually two shelves identical side by side so I purchased two sets of LED lights so we'll be working with two controllers and my idea here was to run three rows of lights for each shelf. And I'm gonna show you how that is done. We're going to begin today's project by removing everything from the shelves. I separated the shelves and as you can see, each shelf has nine boxes. So my plan here is to install three rows of lighting for each shelf. This would be considered one row. And since we have these barriers in the way, my plan is to actually drill a hole from each side so we can run the LED lights across the entire row. If we look closely, we have penetrated the opposite end. Now we can begin to drill from this side for a nice clean cut. I have now made all my cuts. All right, let's take a quick look at our LED lights. When we open up our package, you can see we have a wireless remote. These lights are 118 inches long and they come in a roll. For the back of the lights, there is a 3M adhesive, so just peel back the red lining and these are ready to stick on anywhere. These lights are powered via USB 5 volts and also comes with a super slim controller. Here's just a quick look at the specs. You can pause the video to get a better look. Next, we can size up our LEDs so we can make our cut. If we look closely, about every two and a half inches, we're gonna see this symbol. These are our four contacts, and this is actually a symbol for a pair of scissors. So you can take a pair of household scissors and cut it down the middle. If we look closely at our lights, there's actually a thin layer of waterproofing material on the top. So we're gonna peel that back so we can access our four contacts. All right, so we cut down our first row of lights. So the idea here is to add an extension wire to now go back, up, go back this way. And then we're gonna add our second row of lights. Then we're gonna add an extension wire to go back, up, and then we're gonna add our third row of lights. To make that possible, we're gonna be using this four conductor wire to make our extensions so we can run our three rows. You can separate the wire and it's color coded so you can't go wrong. We're gonna strip back the insulation so we can reach our conductors and we're actually gonna solder our connections from LED to LED. When soldering our connections, what's important here is to match up each designated terminal. So if we look closely, we have a positive symbol here and we have a positive symbol here. So the idea here is to run a wire from positive to positive, from G to G, R to R, and B to B. I really like this wire because it's already color coded and it's actually put together. So we're going to use our black for positive, G for green, R for red, and B for blue. So now we have our three rows cut down to size and also cut down our wire and now we can begin soldering our connections. We're going to take a pair of wire strippers and cut back the insulation of our wire. So I'm using these two little helping hands to hold the LED and the wire in place while I start on my connections. This also has a little magnifying glass if you have trouble with seeing, so you can take a better look at what you are doing. These are the products I'll be using to make our connections, rosin paste flux and fine solder. When working with flux, it's important to understand that this is irritating to skin, so I would recommend you wearing a pair of gloves. I don't have a brush and I also don't want the fibers from the brush to get into in our way of our connections. So I'm just gonna rub a little, a little bit on my finger and put it on our conductor. Flux helps the solder to adhere. So I found it a bit difficult to hold your wire onto your LED. So I have a little technique to get this accomplished. So I take the wire, then I heat up uh, the, the piece of wire with my soldering iron and I melt a little bit of solder onto the wire. So now we have already solder on the wire. 
Next, we're going to take our wire. We're going to hold it down to the terminal that we want. And with our other hand, we're going to use our desoldering iron and we're going to melt the solder that's already on the wire down to the terminal and that's going to help us make our connection. Now that we have solder on our wire, we can now hold down the solder, heat up the solder on the terminal that we want to. Next, we're going to repeat the same process for each wire. We're going to melt some solder. We will now solder the rest of our connections and we'll, we'll continue this process for each row of lights. Next, we can take the opposite end of our wire, strip it down, add some solder, and solder our connection, and continue wiring our LEDs in series. Make sure to match up positive with positive, B to B, R to R, and G to G. Remember to keep your soldering iron tip clean for making each connection. Now we can mount our lights and run them through each shelf. All right, so we started from the bottom. Ran our lights up, go across our first row, add our extension, go up, and now we ran our second row. Add our extension, went up, and we installed our third row. And don't mind the wires being like this, this is all going to be tucked in like this, and then these wires are going to be hidden from the back so you won't see it. So now we can repeat all these processes and steps for the next shelf, build our next set, mount them, and we're ready to roll. To make things a bit safer, you can take a piece of electrical tape and go over your conductors so you can insulate them and prevent a ground or any electrical shock, but nothing to worry about. These lights run on 5 volts and it's nothing to be scared of. From the outside perspective, you cannot tell any holes were made, you can't see any wires, and you can't tell there's any lights there, and that's the product that we want. So if we look closely, here our power comes in here. I tuck the wires all in the inner corners. I also use these little plastic clips to hold the wires. As far as the LEDs, I use that adhesive tape. Works great. Right there you can see the colored wires. It's just all tucked in. Very neat. Can't tell anything is there. I just took my USB cable, used an old phone charger, plug that into the wall, and that's how we're powering our lights. All right, everyone. It's the moment of truth. Wow. That looks amazing. It's lighting up the entire living room. Whoa. This looks so cool. This completely transformed the room. Wow, I love that color. This is so cool. I'm just going to go through which colors they have as far as the steady ones. Wow, that looks awesome. You also can adjust the brightness. Just a great feature. Personally, I like it bright. That really changed things. We also have a few modes. Is it the different modes that we have? I guess it does it for each color. Goes in and out, bright to dim. Okay, we're changing colors like that. You can also adjust the speed so we can slow it down or we can speed it up. You can 
next. Got some flashes. Okay, I guess it does it for each color. Skipping through. Wow, it looks so cool. I really like this one. Personally, this is my favorite setting, how it merges between colors and slowly. It looks absolutely amazing. I'm in love with the way this came out. Even though we're using two separate controllers, I'm using one remote and it actually controls both of them. If anybody found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys next time. Yeah.